Yeah, let me give you an update on this hydrogen cell. I've been running this thing for roughly 11 hours a day for two years, except in the winter time I have not run it because it freezes up and I don't want to put in such a strong uh, potassium hydroxide solution that it would that it would be such a, a thick slurry. So I take it out in the winter time. But this particular cell, as the plates, as they're gener as everything generates in between here, everything has to run back and forth through special channels that I have cut uh, in the gaskets back and forth to the next cell. So there's a lot of travel. And even though the, each set uh, ventilates from both ends, uh, they have to travel quite a bit so that anything generated in the middle here has to go basically one, two, three, about four feet down the channels in order to get out. And recently, this week, I uh, decided I would try using magnets on it. I tried it before without any success, and I had used uh, North Pole on it. And what I had done is taken these domino magnets. You can get these from Home Depot. You can get these from Radio Shack. And I turned the North Pole in and didn't notice any difference. And then I turned the South Pole in and noticed a remarkable increase in the uh, water consumption. I don't have it set up for for tracking the amperage going in or the, or the output uh, of the gas, but I did notice that it was using a substantial large, large amount more of water. And after running it for two years, I pretty much know how much it's supposed to go through. And so I'm really impressed with it and it appears, first of all let me say too that for using magnets you have to have the magnets where the water is moving the fastest because that way the uh, the minerals, in this case the potassium hydroxide, uh, is affected by the by the magnetism. If you're using it in standing water or a standing solution you have to pulse the magnetism into it uh, like the uh, like the saltless or tankless water softeners that use the 60 hertz pulsing uh, to put it into pipes. Um, so I have a choice here because of how it feeds out. Uh, each individual line is is one, two, three, four, a fourth of um, the total output. So by the time they all join together here and come into the tank, the fastest moving solution is right here but I didn't leave myself enough space to put the large magnets so my next best thing is to put them right here where the where the bubbles come up and you can see that the the bubbles are creating quite a torrent in there of moving water and what the neg the uh, the um, south pole does to the passing water it's the same thing that they use for water treatment plants and power plants is by inducing south pole into the water it shuts down the ion activity of the calcium magnesium sodium and potassium so that they do not stick in the lines and you do not get the calcium buildup in the lines and so I speculate that what is happening here that with this cell and particularly with this cell design because the uh, center water the center gas is coming out has to travel up to four feet through those small channels that the uh, south pole induction going in there is causing them to to slip through a lot faster it has actually increased the lubricity of the water without actually changing uh, any of the content of the water so if you want to try the magnetism try the south pole and try it where the water is moving the fastest and yeah I just gotta that is just a beautiful sight <laughs> watching hydrogen being produced and this stuff is really powerful it's I love demos demonstrating this uh, getting a cup of water and bubbling the uh, stuff in there and getting a nice head of foam and <laughs> stand back and light it off and kabam and you get a huge explosion off of it but there it is South Pole induction thanks for watching